the space industry has changed dramatically over that one and a half decades. Uh, if you go back to the, those earlier days, then space was very much the preserve of the superpowers plus some of the larger corporations and agencies. Um, it was very much an institutional business. And that was at a time when, when space was expensive. We had big satellites, long projects requiring huge investments uh, over you know, substantial periods of time. Then it all sort of changed with the advent of uh, largely small satellites, um, which started to adopt different uh, uh, techniques, both technical by taking advantage of commercial off the shelf uh, electronics components, microelectronics essentially, which had spun out of the IT industry. That changed the whole sort of economics of space. And you know, a little bit like the PC changed the whole way we approached computing a couple of decades before that, the industry changed dramatically because alongside the big players, which of course continued to exist, it then caused uh, uh, a whole new uh, community in space to sprout up, which subsequently has been sort of nicknamed New Space, which I'm not wired to keen on because it sort of intimates there might be an old space, but actually it's a new space approach alongside the traditional space approach. We're seeing the commercial sector actually able to do many of the things that previously the institutional sector took. So there's a natural split now. And, and again, if we look at it very simply, we could say the commercial sector should take up everything that they are able to do, leaving the, 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 the space challenges which can only be undertaken by institutions because of either very high risk or extremely high cost or technical complexity. When we look at things like near space uh, exploration of, with humans in, in orbit, uh, exploration of the moon, then I think we're starting to see uh, commercial space playing a big role, initially with providing commercial launch. Uh, but uh, I think before many years are out, we're going to see the combination of, of uh, uh, institutional and governmental support combined with commercial support in order to do, for example, lunar exploration. We're now you know, on the threshold of the next five or so years, seeing the application of robotics and autonomous systems in space um, in near Earth orbit to uh, provide us, as we've seen already, with in orbit servicing, uh, with in orbit space, active space debris removal, a very important uh, uh, application, um, and then in orbit assembly of larger apertures, which means that we don't have to try and squeeze these all into a rocket uh, envelope. The next version generation of, of James Webb is too big to put in any rocket, so we're going to have to do in orbit assembly. And then the logical step from that is in orbit manufacturing, essentially putting a 3D printer in orbit, you know, sending up a bag of sand and, and metal and, 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 and then loading up software to print your uh, satellite in orbit. And then you don't have to worry about the so-called tyranny of launch. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to worry about the squeezing it into the nose cone and surviving, you know, the first 20 minutes of a very violent, you know, comparatively violent uh, environment in order to float around peacefully for the next 10 years. Um, we can design spacecraft like Gossamers from low Earth orbit and in, in orbit, well, necessarily in low Earth orbit, but Earth orbit manufacturing, uh, it will move to, to lunar exploration. And we're going to require, again, robotics and autonomous systems there to better prepare habitats, all the necessary support services for uh, prolonged human habitation on the lunar surface. And of course, the lunar surface, now that there's significant water on the, on the moon, we, it, it now means that we can conceive of having prolonged human presence on there without having to have a, you know, in, in a Berlin airlift, so to speak, to, to keep them alive. Um, but the moon is really just a stepping stone to Mars, but that's, you know, that is a long term in the future. But the, the lunar side is not, and in-orbit manufacturing and assembly is not. In principle, in-orbit powered generation you know, should be an, a natural application of these type of activities. The, the, the question that's always dogged this, this approach is how do you transfer that power down to the ground safely and economically?
there's plenty of terrestrial applications uh, nearer to home that the UK should look on uh, exploiting all the, inf the or taking the data, the enormous amount of data that's coming from Earth observation of all different types, whether it be optical radar or whatever, and finding a way to extract actionable knowledge from that data. So data by itself is, is of not much use until you extract actionable knowledge. And application of machine learning and AI techniques is one way of doing this. And, and, and that's something that I think is where the UK could also continue to play a good strength. And, and then th there are going to be applications in communications as well. Even 20 years ago, I remember uh, advocating that the UK should consider developing small launches in order to provide independence of, uh, of action. If it's done innovatively, i.e. we keep the costs to a minimum, we try not to develop a large infrastructure processes around the launch, and we keep the regulatory side straightforward, and, and of course it's necessary, but it needs to be straightforward, then I think there is a commercially viable business in providing small satellite uh, launches. The second point is it gives us freedom, gives the UK freedom of action. And that's both from the point of view of being able to pursue the necessary security interests that we have where we might sometimes have a different emphasis from our allies and want to do things on a different time scale. We have that freedom of action. The second side is, you know, we have the opportunity then to develop and demonstrate our technical techniques and ideas in orbit on our own timescales in order to strengthen our commercial competitiveness of, of the UK. And indeed, of course, in science, it provides our science community, academic community, which is very strong in the UK, perhaps with opportunities to, to, to uh, have science experiments carried out more quickly. Uh, and, and uh, you know, when I say independently, but not independent of other collaborators, but on a timescale that's dictated by us rather than having to fit into everybody else's. So I think you know, there, there are probably three reasons that a, launch, a UK launch is a good idea and providing it is done innovatively, and I would say sort of in the small satellite ethos, then I think it can be commercially successful.